Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching the channel with my fracking name on it. And welcome to the 89th installment of last week, Lolita News. At the top of the segment, Angelic Pretty released a subatomic bomb in the form of the Soap Bubbles series this past weekend. This reporter heard the cries and gnashing of teeth all the way from fracking Texas. And it appears everyone at AP headquarters recently experienced a spontaneous lobotomy because not only did they not release this much anticipated series as an MTO, they stocked it like it was toilet paper in 2020, leaving those on the ground fighting for scraps and anyone participating in the online release in a battle with enough bots to make the Matrix look like a nature documentary. Releases from the 2010 era are going for rent money prices. You cannot tell me that this brand didn't know that this was going to end in mass hysteria, which means they're either so far up their own posteriors they can't see daylight, or they're truly convinced that what everyone actually wants is a deflated 80s prom dress since they keep pumping them out regardless of the fact that most of us wouldn't wear them to cover our shame. I'd reach for a potato sack before I let this sad thing touch my skin. And getting back to the topic at hand, the fact of the matter is that OTT Sweet Frocks are back in force. This brand needs to get with the fracking times. And I'd like anyone who believes in some kind of Sky Daddy to start praying now, because if the Japanese release was this botched, the US branch is about to take it without lube, and I wouldn't wish the resulting blunt force trauma on my worst enemy, let alone a branch of a brand that has essentially sentenced them to walk the plank with both hands tied behind their back. Good luck, APUSA. I sincerely hope you have some kind of stress management tactics on hand because you don't deserve what's coming for you. Shuffling over to news on future frocks, Angelic Pretty has released lookbook photos of their summer collection. Some of them actually look like they weren't made with a weed whacker set to fugly. And the upcoming series you can look forward to thus far are Sailor Marine Kitten, Jelly Candy, toys, four pieces too forgettable to mention, and the best damn release of the entire bunch, Sunny Smile Laundry, because this brand actually had to print detergent on a dress to get some of you to wash your goddamn clothes. Also, there's some kind of bunny abomination whose scallops were obviously cut in the dark, but it's still more pleasing to the eye than lovely breadline, so I'll give it a pass on not being the worst in class. It should be noted that the Jelly Candy Toys re-release has some new cuts and will now be sporting a heart bodice, and the laundry dress will have a bunny detergent bag, clips, and a necklace available, the first of which is incredibly tempting despite the fact that it will match absolutely nothing that doesn't look like a Walking Tide commercial. This is also weirdly reminiscent of Merry Making Party in cut and color. Do tell me if you don't see it. I'll be sure to get my eyes checked the moment I move to a country that doesn't treat healthcare like DLC. Additionally, this fat sailor cat who's gainfully employed enough to afford a shirt but too dead broke to buy pants exists. What an icon. 100 out of 10 AP. Give us more industrious whiskered mariners. That or start re-releasing your bangles. I haven't seen plastic wrist adornment since 2016, and that was a Little Twin Stars collab that came in a colorway that could have been kindly described as deeply dehydrated dachshund takes a bathroom break on potted plants. This wraps up AP's confirmed upcoming releases. They could absolutely drop a surprise print at any moment. May the best shopping services win in this frilly coliseum disguised as a fashion. Moving right along, BTSSB, Snow White, the story of the Apple Forest, has arrived in the online store. Baby's Disney-themed prints will always kick APs directly in the teeth. And while the best colorway is sold out in both JSKs and the skirt, the others remain in stock should you like to buy something to fill the gaping chasm of rage after hearing recent breaking news in the States. Or engage in general distraction from the global sense of impending doom. Don't worry, I'll be making a video on that soon enough, but for now, the colors still available are pink, ivory, and black. And the cranial adornment is Baby's traditional head-eating bow, though it's unclear if it comes with tent hitches to tie it to your skull. Such straps would have been useful to pull this next series back before it escaped the mind of Meta's designers. Medicine of love may actually be ugly enough to make you sick. And no, I will not be taking questions. Do address your concerns to the box labeled people who got their fashion sense from a simplicity pattern at 16 and were allowed to mature into adults. That aside, I know those of you with the aesthetic tendencies of your average ferret will find your joy regardless of what I say. So for the klepto weasels among you, you should know that this comes in pink, mint, and questionable 
removable bath water. It's up in both regular and plus size. And there's a matching little nurse hat available, which almost redeems the entire shebang if you ignore everything below the neck. This is not unlike dealing with surprise testicles on the subway, so I'm expecting New Yorkers to be especially skilled in this aspect of not looking down. Sprinting away from that image as fast as I can, Meta has also dropped barnyard animals that get more unnerving the longer you look at them. It's called Dreamy Little Farm. And I'd like to know if this dress was printed directly on a CRT TV, because this looks eerily like security cam footage, and I'm presuming this menacing looking goat is seconds away from doing something that would make the devil nauseous. Those of you interested in purchasing homicidal mammals can find it in a regular and plus size JSK and OP. There's matching goat ears, a maid cap, and a babushka headdress to top it off. And there's even an apron to cover part of the print, should you feel like having mercy on anyone who doesn't want to experience this frilly animal farm waiting to happen. This concludes our trip through Satan's petting zoo, and to wrap up new release news, APUSA is bracing for the upcoming drops of the Happy Garland re-release. The bookies are already taking bets on whether or not the site will simply keel over like a fainting goat, and ambulances are on standby. Please do donate blood if you can, because this is bound to be messy. All that said, as that about wraps up new releases, we turn towards last week Lolita News, next special segment, the yen has dropped and everything is cheap again. This statement is absolutely US centric. I don't claim to know how your funny money works, convert it to deceased slave owners on green paper, and I might understand how your monetary system measures up against the US dollar. That very same dollar is currently worth 135.21 yen as of June 25th, 2022, meaning that a 30k yen dress is only about 222 USD, which is quite the discount considering that the last time I actually checked this conversion, the yen was neck to neck with the penny, and that same dress was nearly $300 and or enough cash to purchase exactly two gallons of gas. This also means that the yen has already dropped in value beyond what CNBC reported would alarm Japan's central bank in April of this year, and has even surpassed the 125 yen to one USD that occurred, quote, four or five years ago, otherwise known as the last era where you could get a Milky Chan the Fawn for $200, a gilded age of sorts right before the exchange rate got blasted into the stratosphere, and even looking at Milky Planet could tank your credit report. So why is this inflation being allowed to persist, and what does this mean for the Western community beyond good deals on the Japanese market? To answer the first question, while I am certainly no economist, what I've gathered essentially can be summarized as follows. One, Japanese business businesses usually fear raising prices due to possible consumer backlash. Two, wages in Japan have been stagnant for three decades. And three, these factors provide a convenient means for Japanese investors to take their money into foreign markets, wait for inflation to rise even further, and then come home with more cash in their pockets than they'd previously invested. Prices in their country usually didn't rise after all, no one has to pay employees more, and everything was just hunky-dory so long as you didn't look your workforce in the eye long enough to discern the fabulous depths of hopeless despair. An inflated yen also attracted foreign investors to Japan who were hoping to take advantage of cheaper prices by getting more yen for their buck. And in short, Japan has preferred inflation for decades on the basis of perceived economic benefits. Benefits that would be maintained so long as the yen continued to inflate and Japanese workers continued to put up with no share in the rising profits being made on their back. Benefits that rely a little too heavily on the businesses at home not raising their prices ever benefits that are currently being threatened by a global pandemic making everything more expensive, a fracking war doing the same to oil and fertilizer costs, food becoming pricier by default, and the combined combo effect making this continuing rise in yen inflation look a lot like a bubble that's about to either pop or enter a free fall when the rising cost of imports finally pushes Japanese businesses to raise their own prices out of desperation. This will squeeze households whose wages haven't increased to meet said cost, and it's up in the air if businesses businesses will choose to pay their employees to cover it, or much more likely whether or not the population of street Pikachus increases as every Japanese salaryman who isn't on the clock starts sprinting around the Shibuya 109 intersection like a coked up Times Square Elmo. There are certainly worse ways to cover rent. 
And the situation becomes all the more hairy when you find out that a good swath of Japanese pensioners are seeing their prospects for a decent living grow along with the inflated yen, meaning that anyone who wants to address this situation has to be willing to see 50 attack ads featuring them beating someone's grandmother with a stick, robbing her blind, and then pushing her down the nearest flight of cumbersomely long stairs. So the Bank of Japan just twiddles its thumbs, the Prime Minister sits on his, and together they they do a fun little tango called How Long Can We Continue Before the Japanese Yen Is Too Small to Fail? Either way, prices for food and other goods in Japan are rising for the first time in three decades, and we're sure to see some interesting things as the country weighs investment benefits against an increasingly disturbed and soon-to-be angry consumer base. Which brings us back to our second question, what does this mean for people who like to dress like Polly Pocket on crack? To which I would respond, while everything is cheaper for Westerners right now, and we are seeing fantastic deals when converting our currency to yen, the multi-level pressures pushing on Japan's historically stable price structure could mean that major Japanese Lolita brands eventually raise their prices to compensate for their costs in materials and employees. This same situation could eventually be reflected across the business board in Japan. So it's only a matter of time before this gravy train crashes into a more sustainable conversion rate, everyone inside starts complaining, and we go back to reminiscing about the time you could buy brand with a paperclip and currency from a country that is absolutely overdue for a true depression. The financial state of the USA today is a powder keg that makes Japan's troubles look like a mismanaged piggy bank, and the bottom line is that an economically suppressed workforce is not sustainable forever in Japan or the US, and eventually the cost of paying people what they deserve will come due. This may mean we have to pay a little more for our brand, but given that most of it is produced in cheaper countries outside of Japan, I don't expect the prices to rise more than needed to cover employee pay. Most global superpowers like to export labor and material costs to places where human rights are a suggestion, a dark note that I suggest you eject from your brain if you want to enjoy anything that isn't locally made by a hippie named Sunshine, who has hasn't bathed since the Reagan administration and has the body odor of a basement rat. Whatever the case, and to put down the doom forecasting long enough for you to recover, for the time being, my best advice is that the Western community should enjoy these discounts. The yen being weak is turning what were expensive listings on the Japanese secondhand market into something feasible for people trading in dollars, euros, and pounds. And while those using the latter two currencies are still bending over to take custom fees right up the petticoat, the truth of the matter matter is that this windfall has come down when it seems like everything else is more expensive. It is absolutely okay to grab some modicum of joy in a time where it seems like everything is on fire. And while neither I nor anyone else has the exact answer for the larger economic question that is floating over Japan, I do know that AP is pumping out re-releases from the 2010 era like a god's damn time machine, the exchange rate means those dresses are even cheaper than before, and I am not about to look at the ridiculous prices on the Japanese secondhand market dropping by 30% and complain that this gift horse is engaging in questionable investment activities. You have to make hay while the sun shines after all. So buy, my pretties. Get that once overpriced brand while it's good, because that gift horse is coming to collect soon enough, and let me tell you, it's going to be sporting a mouth that would make a dentist faint. A disturbing image that I will be leaving you with, because that's all the time we have for tonight. This has been Tyler, you've been watching the channel with my fracking name on it. And before you shuffle into a dark corner and reconsider why you watch this show, I'd like to thank my patrons for making this wild ride possible, and should you like to join their number, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for early access and or content that shouldn't see the light of day if the average human being is to maintain a sense of common decency. I'm going to go rethink my life's choices Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Real quick, just as an aside, a little end cap to this video, I wanted to thank you all for your comments and support and for sharing your stories with me when I posted that video before last. It meant the fracking world to me, and while I was feeling a little bit better after making that video, reading everything that you all had been through really put it in focus for me, and it made me feel so much less alone. Obviously, I knew other people were suffering with this, but I, I couldn't even begin to imagine the magnitude, so putting it in context like that 
it really helped me. And I just wanted you all to know that I am so grateful and I am feeling so much better. I'm excited about making videos again. I can look at my closet and just be happy. And I am so, so glad that you took the time out of your day to tell me that I wasn't alone. I hope you're all feeling better out there. And if you're not, I hope you're taking time to be kind to yourself. And for anyone still struggling, don't give up because we're right there with you.